Hey everybody! <laughs> Coming at you with another exciting video. Now, on YouTube, uh, some people love views, some people love subs, uh, some people like thumbs up. Me, I like my friends. I have the best friends on YouTube ever. <laughs> now, I have a friend, okay, that they didn't want to be named, all right, but they have a bug out bag, and in that bug out bag, they have an Ontario kookery. All right, they wound up with an extra kookery for some reason, brand new, never before used. And they asked me, they said, Is the kookery a good blade? And I said, I don't know, I don't own one. And they said, Do you want to own one? And I said, Yes. <laughs> so the thing is, is they said, But they're debating on do they want to keep this in their bug out bag? Or do they want to get an Ontario SP-53, which is one of my favorites, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a video head-to-head -head comparing these, looking at them, talking about them, thinking about them, how do they chop, how do they feel in the hand, going to look at the sheaths, and all that kind of good stuff. So what we're going to do, uh, I'm going to pull them out, we're going to talk about them just a little bit, and uh, then we're going to go around and we're going to chop some stuff. <laughs> I'm in an area right now where there shouldn't be any deer hunters. My regular area I can't go to because it's full of deer hunters. And this place has got a bunch of undisturbed down trees that this place hasn't been cleared out in years. So there should be plenty of good stuff to chop on. So, all right, let's find a place and so we can sit down and talk about it a little bit better, okay? I'm in an area that, you know, the sun's starting to go down. So I'm in an area behind a bush to where you can kind of see me better. Now, the Ontario SP-53, okay? This one was made, was, I bought in 2012, all right? Uh, it comes in the old style sheath that had the pouch on it. And from what I'm told, the newer ones don't have the pouch. This is just all smooth poor Dura. So, let me click this back on. And uh, this is 5160 steel. It has two straps. And that's what it looks like. They claim it's a bolo style. Some call it a some call it a bolo machete. And basically, it's about quarter inch thick. And then it has what's called a saber grind. It has the primary and the secondary grind here. It's got a craton handle. You can see, yeah. Let's see if it'll 5160. I don't know if you can see that or not. Hopefully you can. On the other side, it says Generation 2 SP-53. For a while there, they quit making these, and then they started making them again. But that's so far out of all machetes, or if you want to call it a big knife, that's my favorite. Now, let's take a look at the Ontario Cookery. It comes in a... It's not as good of a sheath. It's, it's kind of a flimsy sheath, and it's got one little belt loop. See this little sewn-on belt loop here? You can compare that to this one that this one has got either the full Cordura built onto it or it's got all the different molly webbing on the back for different ways of attaching it and the back of this has nothing it's just got this one belt loop now this is not 5160 I found out this is 1095 but it's in the kukri shape it's got the same crate and handle of course I put a lanyard on there and I'll talk more about that in a minute it says on it kukri Ontario Knife USA. Alright, sound good? Now this thing, the difference, this is quarter inch thick, but it's a full flat grind. From here to here, it comes all the way down flat. Alright? This is, is parallel from here to here, and then the grind starts about halfway and comes down, and then it's got a secondary bevel. This the entire blade is the primary bevel, and then it has the secondary bevel across the end there. So we're going to see how that goes. All right. Let's hold them up and compare them again. All right, so uh, let's see. A little bit, well, I, actually, there's not much more to say about it other than let's start chopping. And I will say the saber grind when you chop generally doesn't stick. And full flat grinds like my Ontario RTAC 2 and my SE, they sometimes will stick in the wood. So that's going to be the first thing that we're going to do. Oh, wait a minute. There's going to be one other thing I'm going to explain. And I have to kind of 
show you on a tree. <laughs> One thing that I want to say about this kukri shape here is this was really the original, this is a modern kukri style machete. Tactical style, it's not the traditional style. But it has, it has basically the same droop to it as a standard one. Now the idea behind that is this was not designed as a woodworking tool, okay? This was designed as a weapon. The Gurkha warriors use these in battle. Now the idea behind this is, is now Lofty Wiseman will tell you when you have something like this that has a droop to it, he says that when you're chopping, he says the blade will arrive before the hand. Okay, but the basic idea behind this as a weapon is it has like a scissor action. This angle is like a scissor action. Now, if I, I I'm going to try to explain this as best as I can, but it's got to do with the motion of chopping and slashing. Say a guy was in a battle. If he was to chop, see, if he was to swing down, what's going to happen with a common blade style? it would make contact from here to here. And it would be almost like hitting them with a baseball bat. And so it's gotta be really sharp to do a lot of, a lot of uh, depth and damage. <laughs> so now let's take a look at this. As this comes in, there's less of the blade there. And so as you're coming in, there's less point contact, so it takes less friction to push it in. Does that make sense? And that's where the scissor action of it comes in as a battle weapon. Now, us as bushcrafters and campers, we're not concerned about using it as a battle weapon. We're wanting to know how well it works for chopping wood, uh, clearing brush, all those different things. And so, this has a weird, this has a, uh, it has a weird characteristic that with this, when you're chopping wood, you come straight down and chop. But when you come with this, it has a tendency to push the wood back towards you. So, let's see if that has, some sort of advantage in any way. <laughs> I don't know if it does or not, but we're gonna find out. <laughs> now, one other thing that I wanna talk about real quick for those that haven't seen my previous videos is the lanyard. The lanyard is one of the single most important additions to a machete you can have. Now, when you see people do this, and that, all right, that really doesn't do much. The only use for that is if your hands are wet or muddy, or if you're doing something, or there's a chance you may drop it, and it'll keep you from losing it. All right, that's, you know, that's, that's pretty much the only use for it. Uh, some people would say it's useless, but there are certain examples, like you don't want to drop it into a creek or into wetlands, or if you're hanging off the side of a cliff processing some sort of root or plant. But anyway, the way I use these things, on all my machetes is you put your thumb on with the blade facing away from you and you roll it up and you grab it okay now that's pretty much how you how you hold a machete and that way you don't have to put a death grip on it the whole time and it won't wear you out while you're chopping with it like right now i've got a, a quite a loose grip on it and so you can chop all day like if you want to build a shelter or something you don't want your hand wore out so that's basically how i use it now like I said, this was bought in 2012. This is Ontario SP53. Uh, it's never been sharpened with a stone. It's only been stropped and honed because it's never chipped and it's never gotten dull. This thing's brand new, never been used. All right, so let's see how it chops right down here on this log right here. All right, let's ease you down. Take a look here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna chop a little bit with this one. All right, let's take a few cuts right here. Now, as I'm chopping, you can see I'm I'm as soon as I'm hit making a blow, I'm jerking. You jerk to the side, and what that does is that helps the chips explode. Now you can do that when you've got a saber grind. Now, I wanted to read a little bit more about this on Amazon so that I could get some of the specs. 
and it was about five or six pictures of this kukri with the blade broke out. And sometimes this full flat grind makes me wonder if it ain't wedging and people are using that twisting action and they're actually breaking the blade. So that may be something to take into consideration. So I'm going to use about the same amount of force here. Now as you're seeing, so I'm sitting on this log right here. And so I've got the same angle that I used with the SP-53. And as you can see, I've got a full place here. Now with doing this, I'm cutting on the back side. Now if I want to cut normal, I'm going to have to back on up. All right, now I'd say that's about the same depth right there. No chips or dings or nothing, so that's worked out pretty good. Now I'll say this, the lanyard bothered me on this because I think I've got the natural tendency to want to go down, and I think it's putting pressure on my thumb because when I hold it up like this, and chop with the end of it, I think it's putting pressure on that. That or I may have that lander too tight. I may do some chopping without it. This is a pretty rotten log. Let's go find a different one. Or should I say, let's see, <clears throat> this is just, let me loosen this up. This is just straight up outright <clears throat> chopping. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to find, let's find some smaller stuff like, like, like we were processing for a twig stove or something. Let's, let's find some smaller stuff. Because what I'm doing is I'm trying to do what I do with machetes. So let's go find some small stuff and chop them into pieces. All right, so let's have a look right here on this log. What we're gonna do is we're gonna try to chop up some smaller stuff here. Well, let's start with some really small stuff. Just to see how it feels. Like say, for example, how much it, how much it vibrates. Now normally what I'll do is I put a rag down below and as I chop these little twigs, now see the, the SP-53 feels natural in my hand because that's what I'm always using. So let's take this now, the kukri. Let's see how it feels, chopping up the smaller stuff. Now see, I think that actually, on the little bitty stuff, I think that full flat grind has more of a scissor action. It does really good on it. Let's get that bigger piece. Let's try it. Let's see what we're doing here. There's a lot more weight to that SP-53 than you can tell. That does about the same. Let's see. Still a little more chopping. That feels pretty good. It's, it's it's not vibrating. I've had some kukris that's vibrated real bad. Okay, now I just noticed a difference right there. Since this weighs less, it's got a little bit of length on it. You can you can move this a whole lot faster. This is a heavier chopper. This will take a bigger cut. But this one right here, uh, 
that definitely you can move a lot faster. So let's take a look at uh, if we're going to be clearing vines and things. Now normally for trail clearing, I like to use my K-Bar grass machete or my 22 inch Ontario. But if you're going to have a one, one all do it all blade, you need to see how it does on everything. Now, say for example, tra trail clearing, before I try this, I want to show you something. When you've got a traditional blade, semi-straight, you're going to come in where you're going to hit this, it's going to push it in that direction. Now, the theory behind the scissor action of a kukri is as you push it, as this thing goes this way, it's going to rub across the blade and create a slicing action. Okay, so let's try this right here. I'm going to take this, I'm going to see what this will do. All right. All right, it cut it, okay. Let me try and see what this one does. It cut it, it laid it over. Let's see what this does. Ah, oh, interesting, that was even thicker. Evidently, as it hit, as you're swinging, and this is, this is a theory of mine, I can't, I can't slow this down, but as you hit it, it's, it's see that right there? It's pushing towards. Let's see if we can zoom in a little bit on that. Let's see if we can slow down that action some. See, it's doing exactly what I'm saying without me touching it. See, it's moving. It's, it's creating a scissor action. Now, let's take a look here at this and see what this does. See? Watch. See what that's doing? It's not even moving on the blade. It's dependent on the force of my swing, and it's dependent on the sharpness of that one section of blade. It's not moving at all. Let's see if I can do that again. There it goes. Let's move this over a little bit. See if we can pick that up again. Yeah, that's it. So that's interesting. That's very interesting. The kukri, let me undo this thing. <laughs> the kukri, oh, I got it zoomed. <laughs> what? Look out. <laughs> All right, the, 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 the kukri, the scissor action, even though this is not a real long blade, the scissor action of this thing is going to wind up giving you some advantage on trail clearing. So I know what this will do. Let's cut a couple of more of these uh, small things here so that we can look and see how it does because generally short machetes don't do good on clearing now, it's not doing too good on that one now see that's at an angle I bet if I cut from the other side it would work Nope, still didn't. Nope. It just ain't cutting that one. Let's try the other one. The other ones did good. There it went. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Maybe I weakened it. <laughs> but the scissor action, it's going to take a lot more chopping rather than just demonstrating it here for one minute. Uh, so, I think what I'm going to do, I didn't bring a saw. I'd like to baton some stuff. I don't know if I can cut anything apart and try to baton it or shave it or what. But that's another thing I'd like to see is this little section here. I'd like to see how it curves, how it shaves. Maybe I can shave that tree over there. Let's go over and take a look. All right, now whatever angle these things are at, whatever angle they're ground at is whatever's on it. So. What we're going to do is, this has only been honed, and this is straight out of the factory. So I'm going to take this piece here, and I'm going to see if I can carve anything off it without it being batoned. And I may chop it in half and baton it and see how it does on an edge. All right, so let's lean this down here. Got you right here. All right, let's see how this does like this.
All right, now for just carving on a tree, that's not too bad. It took a pretty good hunk out. So let's we'll see how this one does. Turn around this way. Nah, now, I got a curl off, but I had to put a tremendous amount of force in it to get that to curl off. just broke it in half. <laughs> well anyway, maybe I will baton it now that I've got it broken in two halves. <laughs> Let's see how that works out. Let's see. Now the only thing about this is when you're batoning with it, it's got to go down some. Well that piece is about rotten. But I'm trying to emulate, about everything here is rotten. Trying to emulate how that thing would baton. See how this other one acts. All right, uh, that clearly, that clearly took less force to baton. So we've seen what this thing will do from the factory. I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna spend a few days honing this section. And I'm gonna try to get it as slick as I can get it. And then we're gonna put it up against carving with this thing, all right? That's pretty much a, quick rundown of it here out in the woods so uh, like I said that's just kind of a factory thing oh I am gonna chop one more type of tree before we leave now right. this tree behind me here is a hardwood I want to try to chop on it the other one I had was a, a pine softwood this is a little more hardwood so what I want to do is I'm gonna chop on this just a little bit while we're out here Now at this point, you're down to a V that you would want to turn this log over and chop from the other side. Okay. Maybe you can count how long that took. Now let's see about this. I think that had an advantage. I think in this case, I had an advantage. The scissor shape, this is something else that I wanted to see because it might have been kind of unfair for me to sit on that pine tree and chop that other pine tree and say, look, the SP-53 cut on the top and the kukri cut on the far side, so I have to lean down to do this. Well, when you got something standing like this, it could be an advantage because Instead of cutting all on the top and then having to cut on the bottom, maybe this will cut more so over on the side and then you'll flip over and cut more so on the other side. Hmm? Could be a good advantage depending on how you use it, when you use it, and where you use it. <laughs> all right, this was relatively, this may be about 10 degrees at an angle this way, and this is almost of a 45 degree angle this way. So, if you had to change sides, I'm not going to cut all the way through, but you can see how much I've cut through and how much is on the bottom. Now, with your scissor action kukri, let's take a look at it.
Look at that. I cut almost all the way around to the side. That's amazing. Hmm. Man. Look at that. I cut all the way around almost to the bottom. I think I could cut it in half from the top side. Let's try that. I think this could be one of the big advantages of this blade. That right there, that is definitely a really good advantage for this thing. No chips. All right, I'm gonna take them home now and hone them. And then we're gonna try to do some fine carving after it's been devised. So we're back at my shop, and as you can see right here, this has just a slight curve to it. Hold something straight up against it. This is the cur the carving part of my SV-53. Now this part right here is going to have a heck of a lot more curve to it. So once I hone this to a razor sharp edge, we're going to see how well this will feather. Because let's face it, nobody ever takes a machete straight out of the box and uses it forever. They modify them and they sharpen the edge. So I'm going to use my Gatco system. We'll put this thing right here on the back and do some guided honing right here of this little section. The chopping part I have no problem with. The, the edge of it is still in really good shape. We're going to take care of this part. So right out of the gate, I'm noticing something about putting this uh, sharpened fig, uh, sharpen fixture on. Is since this thing is a full flat grind, <clears throat> as you can see, look at that. Put that down. This thing rocks back and forth because this clamp's parallel, but this is at an angle. So I'm gonna have to put some little wedges under the end here to get this thing to where it doesn't flop around. That's one thing about full flat grinds that I don't care for because these have a nice flat surface where you can grip with your guided sharpening system. So that's a minor disadvantage. So this is how I've cured it. I put a little piece of wood under each side and that's made it to where now it's nice and secure and straight or straighter. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this medium sharpening stone I'm just going to kind of hone around on that a little bit and see if I can get that edge razor sharp and slick. I gave it a little bit of a sharpening there with some fine stones. I think it feels a lot sharper right there. So now what I'm going to do is take some... Uh, leather and red rouge and give it a little final strop to kind of slicken it up a little bit. Just keep flipping it over, slicking it up. So it got kind of late on me last night out in the shop. So I didn't get a chance to come out and do anything. But as you can see, I've got a nice edge honed and stropped right here for my carving. So what we're going to do now is we're going to baton a piece. And then I'm going to uh, see how well this carves compared to the SP-53. Right. This stays to a nice edge. So... I didn't have to do anything to it. We've got a natural split going down this piece of wood here, so we're going to ton it.
We've got a nice dry piece of wood and we're gonna see how it carves with the SP53 and then the coop and with the coop. Nice. Let's see what we can do with this. Now this one curl, that one little curl there is what you're looking for. A whole bunch of those just like that for uh, striking with a ferro rod. So this thing seems to be doing pretty good. A lot of these curls fell off and hit the ground, but basically it does what it's supposed to do. So now let's try the kukri. Oh man, that thing does great. It does pretty good. I think I could thin that angle out a lot more and make it do better. But that does pretty good. A lot of the curls fell off and hit the ground though. But it definitely makes some nice curls. I switched areas because it was a little bit it was a little bit too sunny over there. I couldn't see what I was doing. Sometimes you just, you get that. Those are some pretty nice curls there. This is the perfect curl right here. Man, this wind's blowing like crazy today. See these curls light up. Makes good good curls for a ferro rod fire. That's all that matters. Now for the final piece of the puzzle, let's talk about the sheaths and how they suit me. Now I know this is the old style sheath, and I used to have a mora attached to it, but I removed it because the mora was covering up this pocket. Now the newer ones don't have a pocket, but the older one does, so I'm gonna take advantage of it. Now if I want to, I can carry my machete and a silky pocket boy because it fits in there, just like that. So I used to have a machete and a saw right there. Or I can put in a multi-tool and fit it in there. Or possibly a small knife and a ferro rod. So that's that on the SP-53. Now, for this cheap cookery sheath, I can just carry the machete, but I can cure that. A friend of mine in Texas one time sent me this sheath. This is the uh, Accessory Spare Parts Bushcraft Survival Kit. And what this is, is this is a Bushcraft black sheath with a diamond sharpener and a place for a ferro rod. Now on the back here, you have an option of a belt clip or a belt loop. And instead of snapping it on there, what I'm gonna do 
is I'm going to take some of the sticky back Velcro made for fabrics and I'm just going to attach this to this so that I'll have my knife and my kukri. And see, I've already got the bushcraft black that I wear as a neck knife. So all I have to do is whenever I want to carry my bushcraft black, I just put it in the sheath right there. Perfect fit. All right, so let's attach this. All right, now how am I going to do this here? What I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this stuff. All right, take the back. Kind of measure a length of what you're going to need. I'm going to cut it off. Let's say I want I want the real coarse side on coarse side on the machete and I want the soft fuzzy side on the knife. So you just take it, lay this on, just like that. Alright, then you're gonna get kind of an idea of where you want it on here, like this. Peel this off. <laughs> Bumbling around with it. Alright. Now they make a regular sticky back, and then they make an industrial version, and then they make one for fabrics. So you just kind of hover overhead and see about where you want it and stick it down. So that's stuck on there. What I'll do now is I'll take paracord and I'll wrap paracord around this this side and this side and then glue it on the back. Hot glue it on the back. And then it'll be ready to go. But I don't want to cover up where my ferro rod's going to be and I don't want to cover up where the diamond sharpener is. So you see, you just tie it on the back backs here. And then you put some hot glue underneath here to glue it to the sheath. See, that way... It won't slip. But if you ever get into a bad situation and you need some paracord, you can just pull it off. So, just put a little bit on each side. And there you go. And then you just start wrapping it around this then once you get it wrapped down to here you jump down and wrap to the end and then I'll hot glue it so here you go this is what it looks like all right now with this paracord I've got it tied off on the back well for one thing this is velcroed on to keep it from moving around and then I tied it on the back and I put all this glue. Now this glue doesn't hurt anything because when you need this paracord, you can rip it right off. But for the most part, it'll stay. And I ain't trying to win no beauty contest. <laughs> now the beauty of this sheath, I'm gonna show you the box again. This says Bushcraft Survival Kit. Now the beauty of this is if I want to, if I think I'm gonna be cooking food or preparing meat, I can carry my stainless steel bushcraft forest and it fits perfectly because it's basically the same sheath or if I'm going to be doing some wood carving and say I've got both of these others set up as neck knives I can bring my bushcraft black carbon and it fits just like that see now that's a that's a complete kit right there that's been Davized. <laughs> Alright, so here's the finished sheath. This is what it looks like. Now, if I carry it to my side, this is poking me in the elbow, and I'm kind of rubbing here. So, if I move it around a little bit, now let's have a look. See, it doesn't even affect my arms when I swing. Okay, now it may get into the way right here when I'm hiking, so I don't know. I may have to add a dangler to it and make this go down lower. But for the most part, you grab the back side and I pull the knife out easily. Okay. Undo this button and the kukri comes out very easily. 
All right. I'll be ready to go. See how well it resheats. Now that's a little bit in the way of the knife, but I can live with it. All right. That is now a good machete kit. Now for my final analysis of these two machetes is it's inconclusive <laughs> because let me explain to you this is a good machete okay but this is a good machete too <laughs> but see there's a there's a huge difference in the two okay huge difference this is Ontario SP8 it's short thick stout for heavy chopping this is a cold steel jungle machete, good for vines and grass. So, with that said, Ontario SP8 is a great machete. It's one of my favorites. If anybody wants to buy one, I would highly recommend it. This is the Ontario Kukri. If anybody wants to buy this, I highly recommend it. It's a good machete. Now, is, is, is this better than this? No. Is this better than this well for heavy heavy chopping it's better but for speed this is better the action of this thing as you're chopping is a lot faster and this takes to heavier chunks but this only chops basically from the top side you have to kind of lean over this you have to work with it to chop from the chop side you have to from the top side you have to kind of kind of have your hand down but with this thing, you have the reach of reaching over each side. And you can darn near chop through something from one side, from the top. But this doesn't quite have the weight this has, but it has the length. So, I guess in conclusion, my final analysis is, this is a very good machete. Okay, It pretty much does everything that I think a machete needs to do. Uh, it's very comfortable. The sheath is kind of lagging, but, you know... I did my own thing to the sheath, just like I do all my machetes. <laughs> I do my own thing. Uh, but, I don't know. I would say that if you want to leave this in your bug out bag and use this, I see no reason why you can't do everything that you want to do. But, like I said, it's just, I'm kind of inconclusive on it because these excel at two different things, and it depends on what you're going to be doing. You know what I'm saying? Heavy chopping here and light, fast cutting with this one. And the simple fact of this drop in it, the scissor action, there's advantages to this to where you'll be and what you'll be doing. So, they're both definitely good machetes. I'm a big fan of Ontario. I love them. They're uh, up there with my favorite companies. Uh, you can always trust Ontario and K-Bar both. Uh, great companies. So, anyway, yeah, I think you'll be fine with this in your bug out bag. Uh, I didn't have any problems with it, and I liked it. And just like the other one, no chips, no nicks, didn't get dull. Uh, I'll check back a few videos from now. I'll bring this on a few more trips. and uh, But I think it's a good blade. It's definitely a good blade. I've had other blades that have chipped on the first, first go around. <laughs> so, hope you had fun. Hope you learned something. Uh, thank you for the machete. It's very cool. I like it. And, uh, and uh, from Texas, thank you for the sheath. <laughs> I found a really good use for it. So, y'all have fun, enjoy life, and we shall see you in the next one.